Hey everyone, me Kevin here with your late night show. I mean, late night stimulus check update and future stimulus package, of course, for July 13th. And I guess by late night, I mean 8 p.m. Eastern. And we actually have uh, some news today. It is Monday after all. We've got some bad news followed by, of course, <laughs> some good news. Let's start with the bad. And then because this is a uh, late night version, I have a special for you on the Redskins. So stay tuned for that. First, the stock market pulled a big Uno reverse card on everyone today. Within the last couple hours, the market was open. And some of the reasons why are going to affect the future of stimulus. But why would the stock market pull an Uno reverse card? Everybody's been euphoric because the rich have been getting richer and their stock portfolios have been getting fatter and fatter. Well, maybe it's because Disney closed the Hong Kong Disneyland, citing a surge of cases in the city, which I guess a surge to them is 52 cases. Or maybe it's because the World Health Organization is saying that too many countries are heading in the wrong direction, that deaths are starting to climb, which we happen to be one of those countries. And it didn't help the market that then Governor Gavin Newsom out of California just shut down all restaurants, bars, theaters, museums, and indoor businesses. This, by the way, includes outdoor bars as well. Other industries like churches, malls, and fitness centers will be closed on a three-day monitoring list. Well, this immediately got Gavin Newsom trending on Twitter, which YouTube trending is usually a good thing, but on Twitter if you're trending, well, let's just put it this way. The hashtag is RecallGavin2020. And apparently this was enough to dethrone our prior trending politician. And that was Senator Ted Cruz, who was trending on Twitter with American Airlines. Here you can see a Twitter picture of Senator Ted Cruz flying on a commercial American Airlines flight, not wearing a mask, despite the company policy being that passengers are required to wear masks. He also has a to-go cup of coffee, which I have to say, I have not had one of those in about four months now. I'm also not quite sure what to-go cups of coffee have to do with additional stimulus, but I do know that the more and more our country seems to shut down, the more likely it is that we're going to have to see larger stimulus packages coming. By the way, Gavin Newsom's announcement came right after LA Unified School Districts and San Diego announced that their schools would remain closed this year, except to online learning. This will also be setting up a debate with the national government as the national government has been pressuring schools to be open five days per week, otherwise risk losing funding. Interestingly, no more than 60 minutes after the market pulled back substantially today did uh, the White House and Health and Human Services announce that, quote, the U.S. health officials and drug makers expect to start producing potential coronavirus vaccine doses by the end of the summer and that the U.S. is aiming to deliver 300 million doses of a vaccine for COVID by early 2021. Then, of course, we got Larry again. Good old Larry on stimulus. Larry Kudlow today was interviewed by Fox Business and said that formal negotiations still haven't begun. Of course, they're all still in recess, so maybe this isn't a surprise. Kudlow did suggest, though, that there may be some of the following included, and some of these things are things we've heard of before, things like a payroll tax cut, which would give us an extra 6.5% bonus, roughly speaking, for people who are working, but again, leaves out people who are not working, and no particular bonuses were mentioned at all again for essential workers or our heroes. Larry Kudlow did go on to say that there is a potential for targeted direct mail checks, capital gains exclusions, some sort of capital gains holiday, a PPP extension, etc. Now, some of these things we've heard before, that hasn't changed, but what's changed is the fact that Larry was now directly asked if we can now officially conclude that yes, another stimulus package will happen. And Larry Kudlow said, I will say conclusively, we will get something. It's becoming increasingly clear there will be something. Then after admitting that it is sad that coronavirus cases are increasing, he made sure to tell us that job postings on indeed.com are going up, so the V-shaped recovery is real. He said that there's a housing boom going on, which I agree with, that's true. And then he said that there's a retail boom and a consumer confidence boom. And I hate to beg the question, but Larry, I wonder, are you reading from June's data? Because I don't know how many of us are feeling a retail boom and consumer confidence boom here in the middle of July with cases spiking and more closings happening. 
I don't know, but maybe this craziness is exactly why the Washington Post is now comparing Miami to Wuhan, China from six months ago. And this morning, it finally happened. After 80 years, Washington's football team announced it will no longer be known as the Redskins. This according to the team's owner, Dan Snyder, who confirmed that the team will officially change its name. By the way, this is the same Dan Snyder who said in the USA Today, quote, we will never change the name of the team. He's also the same Dan Snyder who told a Time Magazine, quote, the team name Redskins continues to hold the memories and meaning of where we came from, who we are, and who we want to be in the years to come. Now, with the name changing, it's honestly starting to feel like a little bit flip-floppy, which is pretty eerily similar to what we think of when we think of Congress. And I thought flip-flops were designed for Florida. Of course, it doesn't help that the same person, Dan Snyder, said, quote, I think the Redskins fans understand the great tradition and what the name means, end quote. Well, the Redskins last won the Super Bowl in 1992, and they changed quarterbacks more than Larry King changes wives, which, if you haven't seen Larry King's wiki page yet, you could give that a Google and see for yourself. Anyway, we do have to come up with a solution for the Redskins. We can't just make fun of the Redskins and their name change without helping them come up with a new name. And since this is a stimulus-related update, and since this team is based out of the Washington capital area, maybe we should introduce the NFL's newest team, the Washington Do-Nothing Congress, or just Congress for short. They probably won't score a touchdown, but at least we'll have a lot of hope as the football alternates between 40-yard lines. Meanwhile, the refs will just wait and see. And the fans will get two free stocks with Weeble when they deposit $100 via the link below, and they'll be able to sign up for life insurance in just as little as five minutes. Now, I'm sorry if any of you watching are Washington Redskins fans. I do not mean to offend you. The goal is to associate the Washington Redskins with the location where they are, and that is, after all, the Washington, D.C. metro area. And, of course, we have to relate them to Congress. So, please direct any anger to Congress and not me. And in case that was offensive, I did come up with a few backup team names. We could have backup names like the Washington Lobbyists, where your seat at each game is determined by how big of a bribe you give to scalpers. Or even, how about the Washington Drain the Swampers, where every week we get an entire new roster with new players, and then we blame the old players for our losses. According to Sports Illustrated, the Redskins ownership is also meeting this week to change the logo. I have some ideas for that as well. To remind Americans how the government has failed them, the new logo could be a tiny stimulus check that you can barely make out from the stands. Uh, which, speaking of a tiny stimulus check, the more dramatic actions states take, the more likely we are to see a bigger stimulus package. So maybe this could be like a scaling stimulus check. A anyway, the U.S. Chamber of Congress finds that only 53% of small businesses are reported to be in good health, and only 56% are comfortable with their cash flows. That means that half of all businesses are suffering. Yet Larry Kudlow tells us that 80% of businesses are open. I, unfortunately, I don't think Larry Kudlow is associating being open with being healthy. Coronavirus cases are also now uptrending in the majority of states. The EIDL program that was supposed to give us $1,000 checks is now shut down, and it's unclear if you are still in the process, if you'll actually still get an EIDL grant. Remember, that was that program that was supposed to give people $10,000 checks if they asked, and they said they had a small business, and that was cut down to $1,000 per employee. And for those of you looking for mortgage forbearance help, make sure to go to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau website, the CFPB website for more help on that. I will link that down below. Right now, it seems that most people with VA loans are having the hardest time getting reasonable mortgage forbearance terms. This is sad given that the majority of VA borrowers served in the military. Well, there you have your late night show version. Let me know if you like this. Also, feel free to check out the programs in the link down below for real estate investing, property management. We've even got a program on money and stocks combined. So it'll take you from zero knowledge in money and stocks to actually having great knowledge. Thanks so much for watching, folks. We will see you next time.